This is the Big O Show. This is the Big O Show. Manny, uh, I'll give you some homework to really piss Manny Diaz off. Oh, gosh. All right. Well, you know, he said you can't write the book on this team after one game, right? Uh-huh. I, I would love for some, someone to ask him, well, Manny, we're into year three. What's the book on you now? Right. And I'd love to see what he answers on that one because the book can be written on him so far into his third season because we have enough proof of how unprepared these players are on a consistent basis every week. And that to me, I, I would love to see how he describes himself at this point in time because this has been an utter failure, you know. And, hey, listen, I'm part of it, bro. I thought it was a good move. I thought it was a perfect fit. I love what he did as a defensive coordinator. I thought all that stuff. But, it, it's it, you know, I was going to talk about this today, and Manny Diaz on the college level falls along this. I'm watching Green Bay in Detroit last night, right? And I almost fall off my couch, which it's really hard to fall off a couch. But I'm on a couch, and Greasy says, this Detroit Lions team is certainly a much improved team. And I almost fell off the couch. Because to me, Dan Campbell, I've seen this story before. It's called Rex Ryan. It's called Ray Rhodes. It's called Hugh Jackson. It's called Jim Harbaugh. It's called Jim Schwartz. It's called Mike Tice. It's a lot of hype, a lot of blah, 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 a lot of rah, 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 and then that shit fizzles out quickly. And Manny was a lot of rah, 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 a lot of blah, 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 and that thing has fizzled out. You know, I, I've come to see these coaches that come in with all this rah, rah bullshit, and eventually that rah, rah shit doesn't sell long with players. You know, right. and, and Dan Campbell wants you to be a, a big old Neanderthal in football. Let's go. And we got to fight and fight and fight and fight. And no, dude, you need to out scheme. You need to out coach. You need to actually put us in positions to be successful. You got to outthink the guy. It's not about being a meathead. And that to me, I kind of, when I look at Dan Campbell and these coaches that I told you on the NFL level, Manny kind of gives me that same impression. Just a lot of talk. And when you need the substance on game day, it's not there. Well, I, I'll say this. It feels like a lot of times, I mean, like this game, this game against Michigan State is a perfect example. Um, first half, uh, they're holding that running game in check uh, for the most part. It's 10 to 7. Second half, these guys drive 75 yards and, and I think 85 yards for touchdowns. Yes, they got good field position, but they made the adjustments. They started running these little screen passes. Uh, they started running on the outside more often, and they just, you know, they took over the game, uh, Michigan State did. And and that's a reflection on Manny and the adjustments he needs to make as a coordinator to get it right. And, you know, I look, I can't defend it. You can't, you can't defend the results, man. You, you just can't. And I think you're right. I think in some ways, um, you know, he's, his, his, his scheme – and his play calling has been exposed at different points. And then on the flip side, I'd say the same thing for Rhett Lashley. I mean, yes, he's had oh, yeah. to drop balls. Ooh. But ah. think about this. Last year, they were fooling people. How many times have they fooled anybody this year on offense? Zero. Zero. I mean, go, go back to the Louisville game, right? The, 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 the defense completely out of position for a play. Guys, easy touchdowns. Same thing against UAB the first week. Uh, but now that's not happening anymore. So – yeah, I mean, I think at, at a certain point you have to constantly reinvent yourself as a coach. You have to come up with a different approach. You have to, and and I think Manny is his his philosophy of hey, we're gonna attack, we're gonna attack, we're gonna attack as a defense, we're gonna hit, we're gonna try to force for, t- turnovers. Like it might work against teams that don't have um, su- you know, equal talent, but against smart coaches and against other teams that 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 just have smart players, you're gonna lose. Like that whole meathead attack. Hey, we're gonna just hit guys. That's what these right. guys are doing out there. We're gonna, we're, you know, we're gonna try to hit the guy as hard as we can to force the ball out. When you're missing thirty tackles in a game, you have to change the philosophy in some, some way, shape, or form, dude. Or, or, or you choose not to tackle. Right. Or choose not to tackle. Right. I, okay. I think in a lot of cases, I, I do think in a lot of cases there are. I do agree with Manny from watching the film. There are guys going for the home run hit on on a lot of plays. Instead of just hey, I gotta bring this guy down and stop. Him. But that's that's his fault. 
Right. That's his fault that his players don't play with any kind of discipline whatsoever. That's why we had a guy celebrating on the sidelines while they're losing a game, you know, and he's dancing around and stuff like that. And it's like, yo, dude, what are, what are you doing? You know, you're losing the damn game. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a turnover chain when you're getting your ass kicked. I find it to be so embarrassing and insulting. I would have put that turnover chain away at this point in time. Dude, you want that turnover chain? You guys got to earn it, man. You got to start winning on a consistent basis and and play like you want it, and then we'll bring out the chain at this point. But, I mean, uh, I mean, today this year was already the ultimate embarrassment. You took out the chain, and the play, and the play was reversed. I mean, that, right. that is the sign already. Like, right. put the stupid ass chain away already, man. You you don't you don't deserve to run through smoke. You don't deserve to wear a chain. You're a you're a mediocre program, dude. That's that's to me the amazing part about all of this and how it's all accepted, man. Just uh, just well, absolutely. I think, Go ahead. I think, the, I think the only play he's got left right now before I think the team completely severs. And you start to have this situation where, you know, the, the guys in the field don't care anymore because I think they still care. I think for the most part, there's a lot of guys on this team who care and want to win. I, I think he's got to start playing the young guys. And I think that's the only thing that at this point can inject some life into the team and, and inject some positivity because there's a lot of guys with their heads down. I, I, I think, you know, that's it. You, you, you got to give the other guys a shot. And, and to me, there's not much difference between some of these freshmen and second year players, they're oh, still yeah. learning. Agreed. They're still I learning. Agree. They're still learning a lot. But when you put the veterans out there, they're making the same mistake the first and second year guys are making. So to me, right. uh and I'll say this though, I've heard that there's guys that aren't playing that are talented freshmen that are upset. That that they see the older guys screwing up and they're not getting in there and they're looking at that transfer portal like, hey man, you know what? Somebody else will play me. Yeah, no, I, I think that that transfer portal, as this season goes on, will be get very active uh, at the end of the year. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to want out because they're going to look at this guy. 